Up next on The Way of the Renaissance Man, decisions, motorcycle adventures, and the way of the Bushido. Plus, the most incredible sound you never want to hear. Welcome to The Way of the Renaissance Man podcast. This is a show about ideas, personal empowerment, and celebrating the rational life. Our goal is to help each other discover the tools needed to better focus our minds, integrate our thoughts with actions, and live the lives we really want. I'm your host, Jim Woods. My guest today is Keith Fitzgerald. Keith has spent the past 36 years in global markets as a consultant, analyst, and trader. And for the past decade, he's been the chief investment strategist for Money Map Press, the largest financial research publisher with more than 2.6 million daily subscribers. He's a regular guest on the Fox Business Network, and Forbes magazine once called him a market visionary, a proclamation which I can certainly confirm. And now I give you Keith Fitzgerald. I'm joined today by perhaps one of the most interesting individuals that you will ever hear about. He's my friend, he's a genius, he is a bona fide samurai, and uh, he's my friend mostly. And he's a brilliant guy, and he's a bona fide samurai, and his name is Keith Fitzgerald. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, you're laying on a little <laughs> thick there, but I'll take all the compliments. Thank yeah. you very much. Hey, sir. It was great hey, to be here. Who is not gonna? Who's gonna lay it on better than me, man? Well, Come I on. know this is true. We've been friends a long time, so I'll have to give you that twenty okay. you now. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you're here at Freedom Fest. We're here at Freedom Fest. Yep. We have a, a debate scheduled. By the time people listen to this, you'll have already won your debate. Well, I certainly hope so. I'm <laughs> up against a formidable opponent, so we'll yes, see. Yes, yes. So we're going to be debating Tesla. Yep. And more importantly, the uh, the influence of Elon Musk. Now, I am not debating with you. We haven't. Somebody else is debating. That's somebody right. else is your foil. That's right. Okay. That's right. I'm that's just right. going to moderate this okay. debate. Okay. But the reason I I am so interested in this is because Elon Musk is a bona fide genius. Absolutely. And Elon Musk is kind of the ideal renaissance man. Sure. And, of course, that's what this show is all about. Sure. You are also an ideal renaissance man. Well, again, thank you. I'll take the compliment, but I got a long way to go. Okay, so I think part of the reason why you say that you have a long way to go makes you a renaissance man. Because you know everybody smart knows that they're not that smart. Yes, 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 We all, yes. I don't care how good you are, you can be better. That's right. That's right. The Japanese have a term for that. They call it Kaizen, continuous improvement. And, you know, if you're a samurai, if you're a person who aspires to live something better in life, you're never content to sit still. So, you know, my great-grandfather was a fighter pilot in World War I, and he, at a very young age, imparted to me that you have to constantly lean into life. You can sit back and hand it to you or have it handed to you, but in most cases, you're going to wonder what happened. I'd rather be out there, be the guy that makes it happen. I want to live the life I love and love the life I live. Well, you just encapsulated what this show's about, Keith. That's Thank why you. I'm so eager to have you on this show, because what we want to do here is inspire people and give people the tools to be better people. To be, Absolutely. To be renaissance man. Now, for most of my, my listeners know, the renaissance man is someone who does a lot of things really well and integrates all those things and the way you learn those things into your professional life and your personal life. So I'm going to talk, let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. Because you have a super interesting background. You're, not only are you into the martial arts, like, yep, like, like we both time. are, but you speak Japanese, you've lived in Japan. Yeah. You are by trade, one of the best market analysts out there, one Thank of the you. clearest writers I know. Thank you. And, you know, it's, that, that's, I mean, I, I'm a junior Keith Fitzgerald, if, oh. I, if I may. <laughs> but uh, I, I really admire you a lot. Thank and you. And I also think you have a lot to, to teach the world. Thank and you. And I want to bring you and your ideas out. So tell me, tell, let's, uh, let's talk about your, your background. How, sure. Where'd you grow up? What, how'd you get into this whole thing? What, what, what motivated you? You mentioned your, your grandfather is a pilot. You know, tell, t t t tell me about Keith. Sure. Well, you know, I, I, I'm a simple guy. 
and I like to break life down into simple terms, understandable chunks, but I like to constantly reach out and look forward. You know, my great grandfather was pivotal, but my grandmother even more so. When I was 15 years old, she sat me down very simply said, you know, most 15 year olds get a birthday present that's a model or a sweater or a book or something like that. Right. She gave me a subscription to Value Line and Forbes. <laughs> and she said, the world is bigger than your garage. Now, it took me years to understand what she was talking about, but every Sunday afternoon, we would sit down together, and I had to learn to make her a martini as well, because, you know, that was her drink. So I had to learn how to make the perfect martini that my grandmother and I would sit down in her living room, and we would talk about things around the world. She viewed her job as teaching me that I needed to lean out and go into life. And let me tell you why. Mimi is what we called her, Virginia Gruner, was widowed at a very young age. She had a small life insurance settlement that she then turned into everything she needed to live the rest of her life by investing. She became a global investor before the term was even out there. She was so good at what she did, Jim, that the brokers would call her and say, what are you thinking? (laughs) And the other thing she did all the time was travel. And the reason she did was for the reason she was instructing me. You need to understand from boots on the ground what's going on around you because that's how you uncover who you are as a person and that's how you uncover the investment opportunities. And I still practice that today. And as you know, I've come to this show after five days on my motorcycle exploring the old immigrant wagon trails in the Pacific Northwest. And We're going to get into that. Yeah. We're going to get into that for sure. So I'm out there doing what she embodied and I have no doubt she'd be very proud we're having that discussion right now. So Mimi might be said to be the matriarch of the Renaissance woman. Oh, I, there's no doubt in my mind. And she was a real kick in the pants. You know, she, right. she was one of these people. She, her idea of fun on a Sunday afternoon, she had an E-type Jag, was to go out and terrorize the New Jersey State Patrol. <laughs> and the grounds was she needed to exercise the car. Not <laughs> exactly. because she wanted to drive fast, exactly. but she wanted to the exercise car, the car. The car must run. The car must run, <laughs> yes. So, you know, that's how I live my life. And, you know, I'm very lucky to have a bride of nearly 25 years. We've got two boys. I'm trying to teach that as a parent. But, you know, you put one step in front of the other. And, and the solution isn't always clear. But if you're walking, you're on the path to progress. Yeah, I, got, I mean, it's funny because we have so much in common background-wise. Yep. My mother was the original tiger mom. There you go. Okay, so I would come home with an A- minus, and she'd say, well, there's room for improvement. That's right. That's you right. Know? No matter how good you are, no, there's always yeah, room for improvement. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so don't get arrogant. And my yep. dad was the opposite. He was like, oh, everything you do is great. You're the best. You know. And so it was a good blend. He got a little Absolutely. confidence from the dad, got a little bit of a hard, 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 tough love from the mom. Absolutely. And I, I remember when I was a kid, she would give me books to read. Yep. And she'd be like, you need to read this book. You need to read that book. You need to. Read. And she would say, oh, I love these books. She loved books. Yep. So she didn't know anything about investing or anything, but she knew about literature and novels. So she gave me this book, she said, I'll read this book. And then I hadn't read it for a while. It was just kind of sitting there on my nightstand. She's like, well, what about that book? Well, she's like, every kid that's 12 years old needs to read Dostoevsky. <laughs> <laughs> she and Mimi would have gotten along very yes, well. Yes, exactly. So. So that, that, that's, uh, that's kind of how we come to the world. But, you know, I think, Jim, you, you hit on a very important point, and this is something that's unique to our lives. And, and, you know, people ask me all the time, how do I get there? Where do I go? What do I do? You know, you've got to read. You've got to, most importantly, you've got to learn how to think. And, you know, today's media adult generation, today's Instagram generation, people are not always thinking. They're taking in information, but a lot of times they let the information define them and not the other way around. Yeah, I mean, it, there's so much of it out there. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that you do in your newsletters that I try to do in my newsletters is to make sense of all this crazy information. Sure. Because if you get too addled about all the stuff that's out there and don't pay attention to what really matters, you're never going to understand it properly. Now, of course, you have to read and study and be open, have a wide lens. But when you're making decisions, you got to focus that lens on sure. what you want to do and with what you want to have for your own kind of achievement, your own goals. Well, and I so, think that applies. I, I think that applies in your personal life as well in your investing life because if you don't do that, then you're going to practice the Christopher Columbus School of Management. And what I mean by that is that he had no idea where he was going. He had no idea where he was when he got there, and he has no idea where he'd been when he got back. Right. You know, that's not a good way to go through life, he, as far as I'm concerned. He misnamed a continent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he was a great explorer. Yeah. Don't take that away from him. But, you know, that's not the way I think you run a productive life. No, right? exactly. And I think you've got to be, the other thing, you, you've got to be passionate about what you do and why. Because if you don't have that, then what's the point? Right. I mean, the, and for me, 
the the one of the the most important things is to have a productive purpose. Absolutely. Okay. And something that you can really dig into, something that you can really get passionate about. I mean, why bother being here if you're not going to do that? Well, you know, you know the famous swordsman Miyamoto Musashi. Mm-hmm. One Book of, of most, Five Rings. Book of Five Rings. Classic, seminal. I recommend pedman. that, by the way. The reader. You got to read it. Absolutely. Yeah. But he had a saying that's near and dear to my heart: "Do nothing which is of no use." That's beautiful. And you know, it's very simple. It's very elegant, but it's a very powerful statement. Well, you know, a lot of people do a lot of things that, that are of no, no use. use. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, and that's unfortunate. That's one of the things that I want to try to get my listeners to to understand that is you got a lot of choices in the world but not very many of them are really good choices well that's right and in today's world you know my attitude whether it's with my children with my wife with my customers with my readers with the people I interact with every day you know it's the choices you make define you and you can make good choices or you can make bad choices and it's what you do with them at the end of the day that is who you are. You know, right. and you, you have to be able to look in the mirror, I think, and trust who you are. You have to be able to mirror and know who you are. People worry all about where they're going in the direction, what they want to own or what they want to achieve. I submit that none of those things hold a candle to knowing who you are and looking at that person in the mirror every morning and knowing you're genuine. Right. I mean, I, we, I just was on another show and uh, we talked about the kind of the Renaissance man principles of investing, and the number one principle is to thy own own be self, be true. Be true, yeah. You know, you got to know what you can do and what you can't do. Yeah. Man's got to know his limitations. Any know? person, absolutely. Exactly. Now, how, what what do you can you what kind of practical kind of tips from your years of wisdom can you uh, can you impart as far as becoming that person? Like, I mean. It, a lot of times people like you, people like me, we're, we kind of have, have that self-motivation to, to do a lot of crazy stuff and we're not afraid to jump on a motorcycle or to, you know, yep. s- like wrestle with a black belt or, you know, do any kind of thing like that, you know. But not everyone has that kind of, you know, natural, say, like gumption. Yep. Well, what do you, how do you like, what would you say to someone who's kind of listening to this and saying, I don't know, I, I'm... I'm, I want. I know this guy sounds like he knows what he's doing, but I'm. I'm kind of worried about this. How, how do I? I mean, how do you? What do you? What do you, do you have any ideas on that? Absolutely. You know, I help people do this all the time, and whether it's money or whether it's the martial arts, you know, I don't teach as actively as I used to. But, you know, the very first thing is making the decision. Now, a lot of people say it's do this, read that, go out here and do X, Y, and Z. To me, it's the decision. That's ground zero. You've got to start by making the decision that I want to do this. Now, after you've made the decision, it gets easier. You've got to put that one foot in front of the other. You start small. Maybe it's as simple as Admiral McRaven, make your bed every single morning. Because no matter what kind of day you have, you come back and that bed is made, you know you've done at least one thing right that day. And you come back, you have a nice, clean, comfortable bed to sleep in. But to me, it's all about first make the decision, then you start with small, quantifiable things. You know, today, I am not going to let myself get down. Today, I'm going to meet three interesting people. Today, I'm going to have one conversation of substance with somebody I don't know. Today, I'm going to make somebody smile. Today, I'm going to do something right by my kids. Today, I'm going, you know, you, you can pick whatever these goals are. Right. They don't have to be sophisticated. They don't have to be complex. They don't even have to involve money. But what they have to involve is the decision to do something positive. Right. And, and to me, that's where it comes from. It's, it's got to be from your heart. Right. Because if it's the rest of it, you're trying to be somebody else. I mean, I couldn't agree with that more. And I, also, I think people underestimate the power of a small decision. Absolutely. You know, you can do a lot by, taking a, by making a small step. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, you can't do anything in life without making the small steps. You can't go from, like, learning how to dribble to learning how to slam dunk. No, no, no. You're you not going to be an NBA player by dribbling a basketball on the playground in your backyard. Right. That ain't going to happen. Exactly. And then there's that, the whole 10,000 hours thing of practice. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, I, I think that that's a good idea conceptually. I don't know if it's actually technically accurate. I don't but, know. I don't walk 10,000 steps yeah. in a day, probably. <laughs> we'll see. Well, but the thing is, like, I mean, the whole principle is you make the decision. Yes. Okay. Now, that's a big step. That's, well, that's the it, smallest step right there. But again, you know, that's that's the part, Jim, that I find in all my sort of 36 years of wandering around the world. That's the part that causes the most fear. That's where people have the most hesitation right. is they just can't simply make the decision. They see other people making them. They read about them. They see all these people on the on the Instagrams. They see the trees. I want to be like that person. I want to be like this person. Well, you can. 
but you have to decide to first. You can want to, that's different. Want and decision are two very different things. Yeah, one is just a desire and the other one's an action step. Exactly, and, mm -hmm. and that's where the committal comes in because if you take that first step, my opinion is the journey has begun. And once you start, it's easier to keep going than it is to stop. Yeah, it's easier to keep that, like, when, uh, you know, the uh, Newton's law. Yeah, you object know, in motion will exactly. stay in motion. That's because, right. And, and, you know, there's a lot of pe people that I, uh, that read my newsletters or that ask me for investing advice. They're, a lot of times they're paralyzed by fear. Absolutely. They got hit hard in the 2008 sure, market sure, crash. Sure. They don't want to lose any more money. They're worried about the national debt. They're worried about Social Security. North they're, Korea, Russia, Trump, yeah. yeah, There's always yeah. a reason to not do something. Right, right, right. You know, if you can stay in your room all day and say, hey, well, the, well, the world's going to end. But guess what? You're going to die. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to fucking yeah. be gone. Yeah. Okay? And if you're gone... Well, it doesn't matter. You're, you're gone. What yeah, are you going to yeah, make yeah. of your time when well, you're there? And this is something I point out from a financial perspective. You know, a lot of people ask me, how do I get out of the way? How do I move my money out of the way? What they don't realize, and the numbers show this very, very, very clearly. Emphasis on very, in case we didn't make that clear. <laughs> very clearly. Very clearly. Very clearly. It is always more expensive to go to the sidelines than it is to stay in the game and use the proper risk management. Right. You know, people are scared of this, that, and the other thing. But if you've got your risk management in place, that stuff doesn't matter because you're automatically going to go to safety. You're going to redeploy. You're going to know what you need to do right. to keep your money safe. Oh, well, that goes to one of my other principles is you got to have a plan. Yeah, absolutely. You do not go into something without knowing when you're going to leave, yep. when you're going to get in, back in, what you're going to do. Uh, that's, how one of, you're that's one of Keith's laws of investing. Is it? Always sit in an exit row. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that. Well, you know, in, our, in my services, we have a plan where it says, if we are out, we're out of the market. If if a certain this uh, happens, if, if a certain technical level is bro broken, yep. we're out of the market. But guess what? We're only out of the market until that level goes, goes back, back into where, and then right. we're back in full force. That's right. We're not going right. to sit down there and go. Well, we got a buy signal, but we're going to sit down and watch well, what happens. That's no. the problem: is second guessing. You know, and again, whether it's whether it's money, whether it's you know your personal life, trying to second guess stuff always gets you in trouble. Yeah, I guess. You, you know, every person knows inside. Every person that's genuine, every person that's done what we're talking about, made that decision, look forward. Every person knows the right thing. Instinctively, we all know whether something's right or wrong. You just you just know it. Right. And I don't think if you learn if you learn to listen to that reflex, if you learn to listen to who you are, if you look in the mirror and you've made that decision, that's okay. That's good. It may be the right decision, it may be the wrong decision, but you know you've made the correct decision. Well, we only have the decisions we can make with the tools we have at that moment. Of you don't course. have a crystal ball. You don't nope. know what's going to happen. Right. You might. It might turn out to be the worst decision in your life. Yeah, but 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 this is something we talked about yesterday in my presentation. You know, where would the samurai invest? One of the fundamental tenets of any individual samurai in particular was to be flexible and malleable and adaptable. Right. Because change is the only constant. Now that's a, that's that's sort of a trite phrase, but right. the reality of today's world is we're changing faster than ever before. We've got more technology at our disposal than ever before. We've got more information than ever before, but that doesn't change who we are. Right. And so if we take all that away, I think we'll discover that people are very genuine, people are still people. And that's where your path begins. That's where your journey begins. So, you know, a lot of what I do, people ask me all the time, how do you handle all this stuff? I strip all that noise away. You know, right. it's, it's difficult. And I'll yes, admit, I, you know, I feel the angst too. I feel, I feel when people get upset. I mean, with a couple million subscribers, you know, my email goes into overdrive when something happens in the market, you know. Right. But if you strip all that stuff away and you look in that mirror, you go, who am I? What am I doing? And why am I going on the journey I'm on? All of that stuff disappears. Right. And then you can concentrate on the true message, on the true path, on the true journey. It's hard to cultivate a, a good filter. Right. And it takes, and, and sometimes- well, It takes years of practice. It takes years of practice, and it also takes years of failure. Of course. Because that filter, uh, the failure filter works a lot better than the success filter. Yeah, but, but isn't that how you define a renaissance? Because, you know, a renaissance really is the, 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 the uncovering of new information or the look right. at something a new way. The discovery, the, the discovery, scientific method. That's right. Yeah, I mean- It doesn't matter how you get there. But you have a renaissance moment when you realize that something has changed or you need to address something differently. Exactly. The, the, the key to, the, you know, the kind of the renaissance concept is you test ideas, you see what works, you see what doesn't work, you apply what works, you do more of it, you test another theory, Absolutely. it doesn't work. 
So you always got to be constant. But how are you going to do that if you don't make the decision first? That's right. If you don't put it out there in the world, you have to do that. And you have to, well, that's you have to that be decision. aggressive That's it. that decision exactly. we're talking about. You make exactly. that decision first, and then the cards fall where they may. Okay, so with respect to decisions, Tell me about your decision to ride your motorcycle from all the way from Washington <laughs> down here to Vegas and all the way back in, what, 10 days? Yeah, I'm going to be out for probably 3,000 miles or so. Um, I love that. Every year, Jim, as you know, I, I take my bike somewhere. Now, for me, it's part investment, it's part personal discovery, and it's part journey. This year, I decided, you know, I've had it with the press, I've had it with the nastiness, I've had it with all the stuff that's going on in our politics. The world is a complicated place. I needed to go on a voyage of rediscovery. So I charted a path on this year's trip, deliberately, to follow the old immigrant wagon trails. And so I started out very near the Canadian border. I crossed through the Cascade Ridge. I went to places like Stagecoach Golf, Poverty Flats, Dead Man's Curve. And this is, uh, th keep in mind, everyone, th this, is, uh, this is actually on the dirt road. Yes, or the this, is, this, this is, is not a, this not paved highway no. with a toll road. <laughs> no, and I, I've, I've had really interesting trip because I've had to reroute three times because of lightning storms, forest fires, bridges washed out. I was even warned legitimately about Bigfoot by two very believing locals in Idaho who said, oh, if you're going up to Poverty Flats, you better be careful. That's where those things live. And we hear them at night. I'm like, oh, okay. You did know. you hear them? I did not hear them, but they did at their farms. Right. And I thought, okay, you know. I heard you had an encounter with a, with a little rattlesnake, oh, too. Oh, <laughs> yes, I did. So crossing into Vegas, I crossed through part of the desert, didn't see another soul for four or five hours. I was on some wagon trails, and I stopped the bike. I'm riding a, a big it's called a Ducati Multistrat. It's a 1,200cc right. monstrosity, bike. great motorcycle. But when you stop a big bike on gravel roads, you got to be very certain of your footing mm -hmm. because it's very easy to drop one of those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm by myself, so I've got extra fuel on board, extra water. I'm wearing a right. GPS unit in case I really get into trouble. You're doing it You're doing it uh, the, way, the way a real motorcyclist I'm does. I'm trying to do it the right way, right. you know, and that part of it is to keep my bride happy because I don't want her to worry, you know. Right. But here's the thing. So I stop. I put my feet down. I'm inside a box canyon with thousands of feet of, of sandstone on either side of me. I stick my camera out to take a selfie, and right as I'm about to push the button, I hear this... <laughs> That's why there's only half my face in that picture. It's because it startled the you-know-what out of me. I figured, I'm not hanging around here. And I looked down my left arm, and this thing was about three feet off my left hand. So I, need, I need that picture for our website of oh, this podcast. I'll give it to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. very, very... Everyone can see what you're looking like. Oh. You look like you're having fun, but you look like you might be a little scared in the back of your mind. I was a little <laughs> concerned. You know, I thought, okay, how far can that snake jump, and how fast can I pick this exactly. bike up and move? You know, so, But it's, it's been a marvelous trip. The, and the other thing that I've done, too, you know, is... is as I've traveled, I've looked around me, I've talked to people, I've rediscovered that America is filled with resilient, intelligent, interesting, compelling, and kind people. This is not the media where everybody's tearing each other apart. This is, hey, would you like to come in? I just baked a piece of apple pie. You know, look out for Bigfoot. Have you done this? Wow, cool, we're doing X, Y, and Z. Would you like to sit yeah, in for the afternoon? I love that because you see talking heads on TV and you think that and I'm one of them yeah same here you, and you, you think that we're all gonna like go at each other's throats and you no. know kind of and, I mean that is a that, that's a game that the media plays well that's, you know? that's unfortunately the world we live in the sensationalism so right. being on the motorcycle for me was a voyage of rediscovery and, and along the way I've seen growth I've met intelligent fantastic people I've had the time of my life chasing all these wagon trails and I'm going to go ghost towning on the way back nice. up so I'm disappearing into the Sierra Nevadas from this conference tomorrow morning for another five days wow. uh, you know and I'm going to go visit places that people saw a hundred years ago because I want to reestablish the connection one of the most important places I visited Jim was the promontory point and that's where they drove the golden spike that right. linked our country from east to west with the transcontinental railroad and to stand at that spot and to realize what these guys had gone through what they had built what was going through their minds and to realize what happened at that moment in time when they linked us by telegraph by rail right. today's rail and golden spike is the internet right it's the big data and so all of those variables apply and and that's what i wanted to see that's what i wanted to feel that's what i wanted to discover i come away from these trips really invigorated yeah think about all the uh the the brilliant mind power that went into that the manpower exactly. power the the sweat the tears and you got to have respect oh incredibly especially you know it took me on a modern motorcycle it took me an hour to get out into the desert where this rail stop was 
an hour. Yeah, can you imagine how it, what it took on this the horseback? This would have been days or, on horseback yeah. with no water, nothing else. I mean, you know, and I was I was baking in a hundred degree heat in my motorcycle clothing. Imagine what these guys would have been doing on yeah. mules and horseback with covered wagons. You know. Yeah, when you think about what uh, our ancestors did. Yeah. And how they achieved it without all the modern conveniences of phones and you yeah. know electricity and 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 you know engines yeah. powered by by uh, fossil fuels, you just have to just like well, and, bow down to the uh, genius. Exactly, side. and again, you know, to me, that's where the motorcycle comes in. You know, right. with writing, with the financial stuff, it's very high pressure, and it's very easy to get lost in all of that. And the motorcycle is a way to strip all that away from me. It's a, it's a way to do some things I love. It's a way to explore the country that that I'm very fond of. Now, I do this. In the world, in the past, I've ridden in China, I've ridden in Japan, I've ridden in Europe. My point is, I'm always going out and discovering, and I meet the most fascinating people along the way. I had, I give you an example. I put the kickstand down uh, just prior to my ride, so I was loaded up, fueling up. Seventy-five-year-old woman comes over to me and starts smiling. And I looked at her, and she goes, "Ducati, huh?" <laughs> she knew. Seventy-five years old. Right. And I said, "Yes, ma'am." And she said, "My husband and I used to ride those things all over Europe. Where are you going? What are you wow. doing? How are you doing? I yeah. wish I could ride with you." And you know, I mean, just yeah. so so, you drive in in a car and you're anonymous. Right. You drive in on a motorcycle. You put the kickstand down. It's like, wow, what's happening? Yeah, there's a certain camaraderie and openness to discussion. I mean, even the no, people who don't ride yeah, motorcycles. Yeah, even the people who don't ride, and yeah. it, but especially people who do or that have in the past, yeah. because they want to share the adventure with you. Yeah. Now, um, there's one thing that I wanted to bring up in uh -oh. our discussion. Uh oh. Between them, um, and it's 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 something you did to me once. Uh oh. That was. Probably one of the most memorable things that ever happened to me, <laughs> because I almost died. You did not. Uh, okay, I didn't, but it felt like I could have. Right. Okay, so Keith is a expert swordsman. Okay. Expert's and, a big word. Well, you're you're a, a very competent swordsman. Well, thank you. Okay, so and and I'm not talking about just some wooden kendo swords. I'm talking about the real deal, 16th century katana kind of katana sword. And, and he showed me his one time, and it was a beautiful piece of art, beautiful weapon, and you could just think about kind of history behind it. Sure. Okay. But the thing that I remember most is you swung that thing right near my ear, right over my head, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I asked you the to way, remain very still. The way a, a true samurai would do so. And all I, all I heard was this whoosh. Yes. And then you said to me, that's the last thing you would have heard if, you, if it was a real samurai attack. Yes, that's right. That's right. In the 16th century, that would have been the last sound you recognized. Exactly. <laughs> and that, I almost, I almost crapped my pants when that, when that happened. I mean, you know that, that cliche, oh, my hair stood up on the back of my neck, but it did. Well, yeah. it does. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've had the good fortune to learn from some fabulous teachers. And, you know, that sound is is stirring in the mm -hmm. soul yes it can cause panic it can cause all kinds of great emotions but you know it, it's another element of my life you know when i hold one of those swords it's not the weapon that i'm holding it's 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 the it's the life you know there's a saying in the samurai you know life in every breath right and that's really what that sword is about it's the way of the sword is a method of teaching life not death yes. And again, that's something that's not apparent if you're just watching a, you know, a chop em up movie or something. But you know, if you're practicing the martial arts, in particular, if you're practicing kendo or iraido or any of the things that involve the katana sword, you, know, you, you are experiencing life and you're learning how to handle adversity and how to handle a challenge and how to become a better person. And, and you know, it was really fun for me to watch that reaction in you because that's the first moment in your life, I think, where you recognized some of those things we talked about. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'd been in the martial arts for, for well, exactly. forever. Yes. But when it, you know, when you confront these things that happen to you, you and it was of course with love. It wasn't absolutely it wasn't an attack. No, no, you know, no, no. I wouldn't no. be here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, that's right. I, I mean, it was just it was an interesting moment. I never will never forget it. And I thank you for that because it was a, it was a beautiful moment of learning. Well, it's but, funny because when the teacher did that to me for the first time, the same thing. Oh boy, it's like wow. Yeah, it's, yeah that's it's an awakening. It is, and and it, you mentioned the way of the samurai. That's one of the reasons why I call this this show Way of the Renaissance Man. Absolutely, because it's a way of looking at the world that integrates the world. Sure. That allows you to be a better human being with whatever you want to do. Yes. And, and, and again, that's the key, you know, because 
it doesn't matter whether you are 15 years old or 500 years old. You know, if you're moving forward and learning, you know, there's a, there's a German doctor retired who's 97 years old, lives in my town. He will out hike anybody in their right. 20s, including me. I love that kind of guy. You know, and he yeah. just very matter of fact has a smile on his face every day. And he's 97 years old, and just up and down the mountains where we live, and it's astounding. You talk with him, and this is one of those people you just want to aspire to be because he wakes up in the morning, he's like, "All right, what am I going to yeah, go do go today?" Let's go after it. Yeah, you yeah. know, he doesn't just sit there and say, "Oh, geez, oh, what am I going to do today?" Blah blah blah. He gets up and says, "Hey, I'm let me at it," and yeah. you know, he's a lesson for me. It's something I want to aspire to. Yeah, same here. Well. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but Thank I wish I could me. speak with you for like days and days, and we'll do it again, I hope. Well, it's an honor to be here, and, and thank you. I would You're love welcome. to. Now, Appreciate it, Jim. tell everyone where we can find out more about Keith Fitzgerald. Well, I tell you what. There's two places. You can go to TotalWealthResearch.com, so Total Wealth Research for obvious reasons, and that's where the money is, uh, or you can just simply visit KeithFitz-Gerald.com. Okay, and I'll have both of those links on my uh on my webpage along with this the audio of this that'd this be show. terrific thank you so thanks a lot Keith I really appreciate it much appreciate it. it's an honor thanks for having thank me thank you